Hello everyone, how are you all? I hope you all are good. You all are doing very well. So, students, uh, what the thing is that today we are going to start our new chapter, and the chapter name is separation of substances. Okay, that how we are doing, like how we are going to separate out the substances, but. It's just that student before learning about the separation technique, we must know that what type of the mixtures we are getting so that we are having the need to separate them out. Okay, so we'll see all such things in today's session. And before starting today's session, student, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Arushi Sharma and I'm going to teach you this chapter that is the separation of substances. And in that you will be looking at very interesting things. So just... Watch this session with a great attention because it is having so many things which is also related to your higher classes. Okay, so now starting with the chapter. So as we can see here that, okay, so we are having something here. Oh, I'm so sorry. So we are having these two things, one and two. Now, if you're observing these two pictures, so you will be getting some idea that in one of the picture that something is getting soluble in water, but in the another picture, something is not getting soluble in water. That means you will be able to find it out that, okay, it is some kind of blue substance present here. Exactly. So students, in this chapter only, we are going to study about some some these type of mixtures only. Like if you can see here that in this picture, this person is adding salt into water. Okay. And when uh, the salt is getting dissolved in water, so we are not able to see that whether the salt has been added into it or any other substances added to it because it is completely soluble in it. Fine. So this is a type of the mixture which we called as homogeneous mixture. I'm telling you the name. So right now that what's the name of it is so it is the homogeneous mixture but if you look at the second picture so by looking at the second picture you will be like ma'am we are adding something blue kind of substance and it is not getting dissolved into it because if after adding like even though i am able to see that okay something blue component is there fine so that would be the heterogeneous type of mixture so that's how student we are going to see is different different type of mixture in this chapter and how the mixtures are getting formed and related to the other things as well so we are going to find it out in this chapter and the answer of homogeneous and heterogeneous you will be getting in the same session only so when the saliva when you can see that when the substance is getting completely dissolved in the water so we are saying that we are not able to find it out that what we have added into it so that we called as the homogeneous homogeneous and for the second one it is that it is very much visible to us that okay we are adding something blue component into it fine so now we'll check the answer of this two mixture in the uh, in the session only so students these are the topics which we are going to cover up in today's session so it's like pure substances element classification of element these are the classification of elements like metals non metals metalloids then we are going to see that what are the compounds and what are the properties of compounds okay then we'll come to the point that what are the mixture and then we'll see what is the heterogeneous mixture and homogeneous mixture then we'll look out that what's the difference between the mixture and the compounds and then in the last we'll talk about solubility you will say ma'am how many topics we are going to cover up in today's class so don't worry students they all are very easy and it's just that by listening carefully you will be getting idea of each and everything so just listen it very carefully so starting with the very first topic, so it's about pure substances. Okay, student. So before starting with the pure substances, student, you will be having some idea about matter, that what the matter is. Okay, so this chapter matter, you will be getting uh, uh, in your class ninth as well. It is a chapter of ninth class for the chemistry subject. That means you are learning some basics right now. So what's the matter student? Like if I ask you, you are sitting in a room and around yourself, you will be having so many things. So what are those? Like what you consider them? So it's just that student, matter is something which is having mass and occupied space. We call it as matter. So either if it is solid, liquid or gases, everything is having their own mass and they occupy their space. For example, student, if I say that my pen is this and what's the mass of it? So you'll say mom around 10 gram or 20 gram and if it like I'm keeping it on my hand so it will occupying its space as well so that we called as the matter if I ask you one question that whether the air is considered as the matter or not so you will say ma'am air I don't know or I am not
so yes we were talking about matter now student as matter you can see that it has been divided into two categories so the two categories are here it is the mixture and you can see here it is the pure substance so students pure substance is something which is not having any kind of impurity that means student it could not contain any other component in it for example student if i say that the copper metal copper metal that means student this copper metal will be having only copper and copper in it there will be no any other component present in it so such type of substances student which is having only one particular type of element or only only one type of component so we call it as the pure substances that means it will not contain any other substance in it so we call it as pure substances and students what's the property of the pure substances that a substance that cannot be physically separated out any further into other substance that we call as the pure substances you will be get this point after hearing about mixture okay so students for the pure substance what we have observed that it will be having only one particular type of component or one particular type of element in it fine but student if we talk about mixture so mixture is something which is having the mix like you can say it is it is made up by mixing two or three different type of components for example like if we talk about mixture like we when we prepare tea so for the preparation of tea students we require water we require milk we require tea leaves exactly and we require sugar as well so that means students you have to mix so many components then you are getting some kind of mixture that we call as tea fine but in the pure substances student you can observe that it will contain only one type of component so that's a student pure substances are those type of substances which contain only one particular type of component so that if you are separating them out you will be not getting any other component from it but if you do the same thing with the mixture so you will be able to separate out many many component because it is having the mixture of two or more substances fine so that is like tea is a very basic example which i have given you but if we talk about in the terms of chemistry so in that the compound that the substance are mixed with together for example sugar solution so in sugar solution what we will take we take water and we add some sugar into it and that's how we get the mixture of it and we can separate them out as the water and the sugar separately by using the evaporation method exactly student but if i ask you to separate out copper metal from copper you will be say ma'am it is copper only how i'm going to separate out anything else if it is containing only one compound in one component in it so that's how student matter is there matter is something which is having their space which also having some mass and that's how we are getting different different things like solid liquid and gases and this matter is divided into two categories one is the mixture and another one is the pure substance okay now if we talk about pure substances so pure substances is something which contain only one particular type of element or the component but we'll see the uh, its classification as well so don't worry about it and you will be not able to separate them out physically but if with the like in the case of the mixture it is a mixture of two or three components and you can separate them out fine so that is mixture and the pure it and like we were talking about element so it is a very simplest form of matter and you will not be able to separate out it by chemically or the physical properties for example as i have told you copper is a element and it's like that student when there is only copper metal or if i take any iron box as well so it will containing only and only iron and if it is containing only and only iron or copper so that's how student you will be not able to separate them out into different components so that we called as the element now coming to the compounds so compounds are something students when the elements combine together when one or two elements combine together and form some type of compound and it is that they are chemically uh, chemically com combined together oh sorry actually my tongue got slipped so sorry for that so compound is something i am repeating again that when two or three elements combine together chemically and they form 
compound that we called as the compound that for example if we take water so students in water the formula is h2o okay so that means student in this hydrogen and the oxygen these two elements has been combined together and forming the water and the main thing about the compound student is just that they are also pure substances because if we talk about water so it will be containing only and only h2o molecule other than that we don't have any other type of water molecule so that's how student compounds and elements are considered as the pure substances because they are having only one particular type of component in it h2o is also one particular type of component so that's how student we can't separate them out physically or chemically so that is the pure substances now if we see pure substances or the elements has been classified into three categories so what are those three categories students so these three categories are as we can see here it is metals and non metals and metalloids so just give me a minute so yes you can see here students like if you see first of all metals so if it is a piece of metal let's say it is the iron iron is a metal students so what happened that when iron is present here and when you like you can see when you are completing this circuit so there is the flow of electricity and when there is a flow of electricity so this bulb is glowing that means students metals are something or metals are those elements which are the good conductor of electricity good conductor of electricity because they are allowing the passage of the current through them but if we see in the case of the non metal so you can see here that it is the ceramic and it is a type of the non metal okay and when you are co uh, completing the circuit you can see that this bulb is not glowing not glowing that is electricity is blocked here that when the current is passing through it it will not allow the passage of current through it so that the bulb can glow and that's how student met non metals are something which are not good conductor of electricity so we call them as the insulators fine so what are the elements classification if you see metals non metals and metalloids and metals are something which are the good conductors of the heat and electricity both of them because if you see that if you are having iron rod in your hand and at the one end you will be having a uh, like candle so you what you will be noticing that the other end will get heated as well but in the case of the wood if you do the same thing it will not allow that because wood is insulator for it even though student if you have noticed if someone is getting electric shock so we use plastic or wood because they are made up of non metals because that what they will do they will cut uh, cut down the supply of current and that's how we can save that person from the electric shock so that is the student metals are something which are the good conductor of electricity and heat whereas the non metals are those type of elements which are not the good conductor of heat and electricity fine so these two are the uh, these two are metals and non metals but now talking about the third category of the elements that is the metalloids so metalloid students are those which are having the some properties of metals and some properties of non metals that means you can say they are having the mix mixture of the properties of metals and as well as the non metals so you can see here that is the silicon boron antimony and germanium okay so what happens student when you add some impurity in them when you add some impurity in it impurity for example if it is silicon and if in in that if you are adding aluminum aluminum or if you are adding phosphorus into it so because of the this impurity addition student they also start behaving as the conductors but they are not completely conductors we call them as semiconductors that means they are having the ability to conduct electricity but not as compared to the metals metals are very good conductor of electricity fine so that's a student we have the classification of the elements and that is the metals non metals and metalloids so metals are something which are the good conductor of heat and electricity because they are allowing the like proper passage of the current and there is the glowing of bulb but in the case of the non metal student it's like it will not allow the passage of the current and the bulb will not glow that's how we are calling it as insulators but as we have talked about metalloids so metalloids are something which are having the property of both metals and non metals that is why when you add some impurities in it so it will convert into the semiconductors and they will allow the passage of current through them but as compared to the metals they are not that much conductor can they do not show that much type of conductivity fine so this is the classification of elements 
now moving towards the another topic that is the compounds as we have studied about the elements that it will contain only one particular component but now students as we can see compounds so compounds are those type of chemical substances students in which two or more elements combine together and they will combine in such a way that they will form some chemical bond between them and when they are forming the chemical bond between them it is that student they fixed in such a ratio that we can't alter that ratio okay for example h2o so in that student hydrogen and oxygen bind together with the help of the chemical bond and you can see that in this compound hydrogen is 2 and oxygen is 1 that means where like whatever there will be the condition like whether water is present in the ice form liquid form or vapor form the chemical formula of the water will remain same that will be only h2o that means two molecules of hydrogen bonded with the one oxygen sorry two uh, two hydrogen will be bonded with the one oxygen so that will be the fixed ratio it is not going to be changed at any condition because they are chemically bonded each other and they are having their fixed ratio the and that's how we call it as compound because it is the combination of two elements here now as we can see another example that is the carbon dioxide so in carbon dioxide student it is co2 that means one will be the carbon and two will be the oxygen so this is the ratio of carbon dioxide that whenever you will be finding carbon dioxide formula so it will be having only co2 that means one carbon and two oxygen that means with one carbon two oxygen has been bonded and it just that they are present in the fixed ratio and we can't separate them out so element we have seen that we have three type of elements metals non metals and metalloids and when those elements combine together and bond with each Each other chemically and present in some fixed ratio that we call as the compounds. Fine, okay. So now we are going to study about the properties of compounds. So here, that student, that elements are not easily separated by physical means. Obviously, students like H two O is there, so we can't separate them out physically. Or will you be able to separate them out? Like if there is water in front of you and you are separating out hydrogen from it and oxygen from it. exactly not because we can't separate them out elements which are present in the compound physically okay the compound has properties quite different from the elements as it is formed from exactly students for example like h2o is formed from the hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas and hydrogen is also gaseous in nature and oxygen is also gaseous in nature but when they combine together so they form h2o and h2o is what student it is liquid and definitely student gases are having their own property and liquids are having their own property so it's not like that student that whether the compound is forming from the element so it's not compulsory that the property of the elements is transferring to the compound as well that the compound and the element both are having the same property it's not like that when the two elements are combining together so it just that they lost their properties and that at that point there will be the generation of some new properties and that we called as the property like and then we call it as uh, that uh, that there is a difference in their properties at that point okay now the formula of a compound summarizes the whole number atomic ratio of what it is up made up of like methane ch4 is there composed of one carbon atom combined with four oxygen hydrogen atoms obviously students that whenever we are studying the formula of any of the compounds so will be getting the idea that okay this compound will having how many atoms in it for example if we see hydrogen and oxygen for the h2o so h2o it will be indicating that it contains two hydrogen and one oxygen that means in total it contains three elements in it exactly student by looking at the compound or that we come to know that what's the exact atomic ratio here that whether it is 2 is to 1 or 1 is to 2 or 1 is to 4 that means how many atoms are attached with one particular atom okay the word formula can also apply to elements example hydrogen oxygen ozone and phosphorus so we have given this name to these elements here okay because hydrogen is all also what it is also attaching with another hydrogen oxygen attaching with another oxygen phosphorus like four phosphorus combined together so that's a student compound is something in which elements combine together and they are having chemical bond between them and it just that they are having some fixed ratio which is not going to be changed physically and that's a student they show some different properties
Okay, so that's the properties of the compounds. And now we have discussed about substances, pure substances. That means they will not contain any other type of component as the mixtures contain. And then we have seen that the elements are of the three types, that is the metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Then we have talked about compounds, and they are also having only one type, particular type of component. Like if we are talking about water, so water will contain only and only H2O molecule, not other than that, like H3O, H2O4. No, it will be having only H2O. So that's how they are also pure in nature. Now we'll talk about mixtures as we have done with the compounds now coming to the mixture. So mixture is something student when you are mixing two or three components, two or three components into different ratio like they don't have any fixed ratio. It depends on our condition on our need that how much like how much requirement is there. For example, whenever we prepare tea. So it's like that uh, some people like one spoon of sugar in it, some will like two, some will like half. So that's how it depends on our condition. So mixture is something in which we are adding two or three components in it and it will not having any fixed ratio and you can separate them out by using physical or the chemical method as well so that we call as the mixtures okay now students we are having two type of mixtures and what are those one is the heterogeneous mixture and another one is the homogeneous mixture. We'll see that, that what exactly it is. But if you look at this picture, so what you will be observing that this is one type of particle and this is second type of particle. Similarly, here, student, it is one and it is two. So in the homogeneous picture, if you uh, look at it carefully, so you will be finding that all of the components, if you consider it, so they are very regularly arranged, like one after another, one after another. So that's how they are regularly arranged. But in the heterogeneous, it's just that some of them, that they are not regularly arranged. They are very irregular in nature. That means homo means same, that they will be same throughout the condition and hetero means different, that they will not have proper arrangement in it. So mixture is something in which you are mixing two or three components components or more than that also and it's just that you can separate them out physically or chemically method and it's just that they are separated uh, like they are classified into two categories that is the heterogeneous and homogeneous homogeneous in which the substance are, you can see that the components are arranged very regularly they will be having some uniformity in that okay they because they are uh, following some regular pattern but for the heterogeneous they are non-uniform in nature Okay, now we'll talk about homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture. So now in the homogeneous mixture student, if we see that this person that they have taken water in it. Okay, so water is there. So water in this water, we are adding some salt. Okay, salt is added up. Now when you adding salt into it and when you stir it, so what will happen that salt will get dissolved into water. And when salt is getting dissolved into water student, so you will be not able not able to find out what the component you have added what the component is added so that's a student when this when you are mixing something in such a way that it is getting dissolved completely and after complete dissolution you will not getting idea that what exactly you have added into it so that's how students such mixtures are called as the homogeneous mixture and these mixtures are uniform in nature uniform means students like throughout the condition it will be having only one phase one phase that means student whether we are having two cup phase like water is the liquid phase that present in the liquid phase and the salt present in the solid phase but when you are mixing these two and salt get dissolved into water so after that student we are having only liquid phase that is the water so that's a student homogeneous mixtures are those type of mixture that after the mixing up you will not get an idea that what you have added into it exactly and it will be uniform throughout the uh, condition and it just that after mixing Mixing up, you will be getting only one phase as we are getting here. Okay, so that is the homogeneous mixture. Now, if we talk about heterogeneous mixture, so heterogeneous mixture students are just vice versa of homogeneous. Like in the homogeneous, we are having the idea that, uh, sorry, we are not getting the idea that, okay, after mixing up, where the salt has been gone because it is completely soluble in it. But as you can see here in this picture, that it is water and it is sand. 
water plus sand. So when you add sand into water, and if you allow that beaker to stand for some time before, like without disturbing it, so after some time, what you will be observing that the layer of the sand will get settled at the bottom, and you can separate it out very easily. Even the homogeneous mixture are also separable. That means like sugar and water is there, so you can use a evaporation method, and the water get convert into uh, vapors, and it just that uh, you will be getting sugar only. Similarly, students, in heterogeneous mixture, that what will happen when you are adding sand into water. So by using sedimentation and decantation process, you can separate them out because sediment will get settled down at the bottom that sand and you will be separating water from it by decantation process. But it's just that student in heterogeneous mixture, you will be having idea and it is visible to you. Visibility will be there. That means whatever you are adding it as it is insoluble in nature into water. So it will get settled down at the bottom and you will be having idea that, okay, I have added sand into it. Fine. And it will be having non-uniformity. Because we can see that sand is not soluble in water. So you will be getting water separate and the sand will get separately. That's how. And in this condition, students, you will be having two phase. Two phase or more than that also. Because water and sand. And sand is not soluble in water. So sand will remain separate and water will remain separate. And sand will know that it present in the solid form and water is in liquid. And when we are getting these two phase, even after the, uh, dissolving these two together, and we are getting the two separate faces. So that's how we get two faces in that. But in the homogeneous, we are getting only one face. So this is the basic difference between these two. In homogeneous, we will not having any idea. And it's just that after dissolving, we will be getting only one phase. And we can separate it out by using the vaporization method. That is the evaporation. Okay. How? For example, that if it is the container and if it contains uh, like sugar solution is there. Sugar solution and if you are heating it, okay. So water will convert into vapor, that the water convert into vapor form and you will be left with sugar only. And here it is sugar. Okay, and similarly students, like if you see for heterogeneous, like if it is the beaker and in this beaker you are having some water and if you are adding sand into it, so sand will get, you can see that settled at the bottom and you will be having clear water over it, that is the clean water. Now what you can do, you can decant this water, clean water into any other beaker, that is the decantation process decantation process. Fine students, so that is the homogeneous mixture and the heterogeneous mixture. That means we are getting two type of mixture and we both are separable in nature. And maybe students, you will be having some other examples also. So don't worry, if you're having other examples, you can take them as well. So this is the mixtures. That means we are having two or three components mixed up together and we can separate them out to chemically and physically as well. So it's just that they are the two categories are there, heterogeneous mixture and homogeneous mixture. And it's just that for the homogeneous, we are having some kind of uniformity. One phase will be there. For heterogeneous, it's just that two phases are there or more than that also, depending upon the components you have added into it. Fine. Now we'll see that what's the difference between mixture and compound. So students in compounds, what we can see that the elements are combining chemically and they are present in the fixed ratio. Okay, like if I talk about compound and if I talk about mixture. So in the compound students, the elements are combining together like two or more elements and they are present in the fixed ratio. For example, H2O. But in the mixture student, yes, we are adding substances, but it's just that student, they are not having any fixed ratio, not fixed ratio. For example, student, like you are having one glass of water. So you can add into one spoon of sugar. You can add two spoons also. But if you again increase the water level, so you can add more sugar into it. So it's just that it's not having any fixed ratio that how how much water will add how many like how much of sugar it is that yes it is having it but when you increase the water level so you can add more sugar into it so that's how in mixture we don't get any fixed ratio for that it's according to our wish but for the compound it is fixed we can't alter it okay and it's just that we can separate we can't separate them out physically 
not physically separable, whereas they are physically separable. That means you can separate them out. For example, students like, okay, sugar solution will be there and you will be not, like you can't separate them out physically. But for example, student, when we are having large size of impurities, uh, large size of impurities, so we can separate them out also. Like hand picking method you can use. Generally, students, what happened, like uh, the rises we, we are getting from field, so they contain some small stones then in it. So we separate the, those stones by picking them by using our hands. So that's how student, we can separate them out such type of mixture physically as well but for the compound student you can't separate them out physically so that's the main difference between the mixture and compounds that compounds are the substances which are formed with the help of the element that is two or more elements combined together chemically and it's just that they are present in the fixed ratio and we can't separate them out physically but if we talk about mixture so mixtures are those substances which are physically mixed together and it's just that you can separate them out physically as well and they don't have any fixed ratio fine so that's the basic difference between mixture and compounds now solubility so because students like we have already talked about mixture and the, so, some substance are soluble some substance are not soluble so solubility is defined as the amount of a given substance that can be dissolved in a certain amount of solvent for example, student, you can see here that this, these are the two beakers and both are containing same level of water. In one, you can see that the substance is soluble because you can see that it is uh, spreading in all of the direction. But in this, this substance is not soluble because it is settling at the bottom. So some of the substance are soluble, some of the substance are that yeah we are talking about solubility that it depends upon the type of the component we are having that whether it is having the soluble component or insoluble component or partially soluble so it, that defines its solubility that means how much of the substance is getting dissolved in a particular amount of solvent that we call as the solubility that for example students as we can take that okay this is the beaker and in this beaker i am taking 20 ml of water let's say 20 ml of water. Now, student, that what's the ability or what's the capacity of sugar to get dissolved in this 20 ml? That, for example, if 5 gram of sugar is completely soluble in water, and it's just that after like over 5 gram, you will be not able to dissolve the sugar in the water, then we can say that the 5 gram, uh, uh, like this much of the sugar is completely soluble in the 20 ml of water, and this will be its solubility. So the maximum amount of the given substance that can be dissolved in a certain amount of the solvent that we call as the solubility. And it also depends upon the type of the substance that whether we are having the soluble substance or the insoluble one or the partially soluble one. That means half of it is getting dissolved and half of it is not getting dissolved. So that's the condition. Fine students, so this is solubility. Okay, so with that, we have discussed all of the topics of today's class. That means now you can see now that you will be maybe worried about this thing that ma'am, how we are going to cover up all of the topics. So these topics are very simple students and it's just that you have to listen them very carefully and you will be getting idea of each one of them. Okay, so with that, we have completed today's session. Now we are going to meet in next session. Till then, study well, watch the session carefully and it's just that uh, what I can say that if you are having any doubt after watching the video any queries there you can post your question on public or private forum of ask itians and you will be getting answer from the expert side and that's how we'll be completing the other part of this chapter into the next session fine students thank you and keep learning from ask itians